This conference call, will now be call. recorded. I'll call to order the June 16th, 2022 uh, Planning Commission Comprehensive Plan Workshop. Um, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Greg, can you do the roll call? All right, roll call. Brad Osborne. Not the line. Not present. Michael Walk. Present. David Kennedy. Present. Monica Hodges. Present. Diane Kelly. No, nope, not present. Andrew Flagg. Present. Timothy Dugan. Present. Brian Height. Present. David Wilson. Present. Mark Luth. Online, not present. Trevor Dombach. There we go. I'd also like to recognize township staff and consultants here. Um, we have Greg Adams, township planner, Hannah Clark from Michael Michael Baker International, our comp plan planner, Robert Emanuel with community development, uh, Linda Barr with um, permits coordinator. And we have our fire commissioner, Chris. Uh, I don't want to butcher the name. <laughs> it's like Kiss a Rabbit. Yes. Herb, Herb Bender with uh, Public Works as well. And Ashley Eichlin from Barry Eisen Associates. Ashley Eichlin from Barry Eisen Associates, for those at home. Great. Um, you want to do the meeting rules, Greg? Yes, I do. These meetings are intended to be planning commission workshops. The goal of these workshops is to complete the planning commission's PA MPC duty to quote, prepare the comprehensive plan for the development of the municipality as set forth in this act MPC and to present it to the consideration of the governing body unquote. While it is the role of planning commission to prepare the comprehensive plan to do so without the input of the board of commissioners would ultimately reduce the plan's chances of the board of commissioners approving it. Therefore, any input provided by the Board of Commissioner members will be valuable moving forward with the drafting of the comprehensive plan. Please note that this is a hybrid in-person remote meeting. All participants are welcome to verbally give comment during the designated portions of the meetings. For an orderly meeting wherein all attendees may be able to fully participate, we ask that you adhere to the following rules. Please mute your microphone or telephone to avoid background noise that may cause interference in the meeting and make it difficult for others to hear. Staff may mute the microphones of remote attendees if needed. Public questions and comments will be taken at periodic intervals throughout the agenda. We will start with no time limits, but the Planning Commission Chairman may impose a time limitation if there are many questions or if the meeting is running short on time. For in-person attendees, which we have one, please raise your hand to be recognized and then move to the podium when directed and state your name, address, and comment or question. Please turn the mic podium microphone on before speaking and off when done. 
For remote attendees, the chat box feature will be active throughout the meeting. If you have a comment or question, please type your full name and address in the chat box, indicated by the speech balloon icon in the upper right. When you are recognized and so directed, please unmute your microphone and state your comment or question. Mute your microphone when done. For those who are accessing the meeting by phone only, staff will periodically ask for caller comments and unmute all callers. Callers must identify their name and address prior to making comment. Your cooperation and adherence with these rules will ensure an orderly and respectful meeting. Thank you. All right, agenda item number three, approval of minutes. We do not have any minutes. Agenda item number four, process review, that's been completed. So we'll move on to agenda item number five, comprehensive plan goals and implementation of e-community facilities. Let you take over, Greg. Okay. Well, normally Dave would talk for a while and then solicit comment. I'm going to talk for less time and probably solicit comment. So I think by now most of you are familiar with this process. Uh, this is workshop meeting number six. Um, next slide. There you go. Um, we did discuss the timeline at the last meeting. Uh, that still is unchanged. So uh, the timeline is such that we are hoping for, at the very latest, a December adoption of this plan. Next slide. The process, as you've come to uh, be familiar with, um, that we've done so far is the statement of goals and objectives. We've already covered that. That's the overall goals and objectives. Uh, we've gone through the resource protection plan and the community utilities plan. All of those have been posted to the website for uh, community comments. And just so that you're aware, we have received two community comments since the last meeting. And I did distribute them uh, before the meeting. Uh, we have a very nice comment from Marie North on community utilities. Um, and I believe she suggests um, exploring geothermal or geo exchange uh, for the use of our buildings. Um, so there's very nice information in there. Um, and she does mention, look at solar potential for solar as well. The second comment was delivered uh, by email. It is from a Mr. Bill Stanley of 2913 Mock Chunk Road. And this speaks to the traffic, which we will see next month in July. Um, but he did submit a number of comments um, so that they are there for your perusal. Uh, well, these will be covered in more depth in July. So continuing, um, last week we looked at the housing plan. Um, we took comments and in the next week or so, staff will get together and start synthesizing um, all those comments into uh, more compact recommendations. Tonight we are looking at community facilities. Um, which is, of course, incorporating emergency services, the Parkland School District, and the Parks Recreation Open Space. Um, and in July, we will be looking at the transportation plan. So that is where we're at in the agenda process. Next slide. After July, we are going to look at mapping and land use plan. That will be, for many of you, where the rover meets the road. Uh, we will do some modeling after that, and we hope to have a draft comprehensive plan available by the end of September. So that's where we are in the overall process. Next slide. Uh, by this time, you should be familiar with the overall meeting flow. Um, we're going to do, we're going to skip the public review comment. Well, we just did the public review comment. We're going to skip the review of synthesized goals for housing. Uh, that will occur next month in July. Um, so since we're skipping that, we have no open comment period. Uh, there's nothing to approve for posting. So next slide. And we've covered those before. So next slide. Once again, there is no review of synthesized goal tonight. That will be for the July meeting. 
Next slide. And as it says, housing. So keep moving. So tonight we're looking at community facilities. Um, since these are broken down into the three different categories, um, we're going to do individual um, staff review of goals and objectives. Um, we will have subject matter experts here to add their two cents to that. And then we'll be moving into the Board of Commissioners comment period, the public comment period, the Planning Commission comment period. And generally, we've avoided the prioritization um, unless you're very specific in your comments. So that will be tonight's process. Next slide. There is no new element. Uh, the new element tonight will be the um, public outreach draft plan that Hannah will be presenting toward the end of the meeting. So move on to the next slide. Moving to community facilities. The 2022 overall goal for community facilities is to promote an effective continuation of opportunities, facilities, and services for parks, recreation, education, public safety, and wellness. That is the overall goal of this chapter. Within that, next slide, the 2009 comp plan goals are here. Um, I did send out these slides to all of you um, on Tuesday evening. I hope you had a chance to review them. I'm not going to review all of these um, individually. Um, if you have any questions or you want clarification on any of the goals listed, uh, please speak up now. I'll give you a minute to think about them. I noticed we accomplished goal one. Indeed we did. So that could be considered to be removed or carried. Up to you. Any other commentary, questions, clarification? Anything? Is, no. Is there any um, general information in terms of goals two and three, if we met them or if there's been a, a change just to you know, see how we did? I would say, other than the standard upgrade of technology over time that you would normally see, um, I don't believe there's been any significant um, upgrade to number two. If I recall the 2009 comp plan, we were actually looking at uh, an offsite site for township data and a secure transmission through that, you know, between the two. That did not come to fruition. So the secured transmission was not needed. Thank you. Thank you. I know it, it really doesn't have to do directly with number two, but at the last public safety meeting, um, there was a gentleman talking about the Nixle system. And even though that doesn't integrate all the different facilities, it will integrate communication between our residents, between emergency services. So maybe indirectly, that Nixle it there or, mm. or maybe it's something different i don't know but i just wanted yeah, to bring I, it up because I, it's it's right. something that we could go forward with and include in this I, exactly yes um yeah i believe that doesn't fit because nixel is more the public face i believe this is secure um and reliable transmission between for example uh the township building the emergency services um you know, obviously the fire companies um, and perhaps even the um, uh, wellheads, the pump stations, stuff like that. So two slightly different things, but it, it's good to know that uh, one of the things we could add is improving our emergency services and township interfaces with the public. Greg, hi. I have a general comment. Mm -hmm. um, based on years of doing this type of work. Um, I look at all three of these statements. I don't think they're really goal statements. Mm -hmm. um, you and I have talked about this previously. And, you know, we've talked about it at previous meetings here. Um, these are either actions or they're activities. Mm -hmm. 
it, it doesn't state what the goal is, and the goal should be stated as an end result, mm -hmm. uh, and it should be measurable so that we can say for sure whether we did meet the goal or not. But So just as an example, prepare to meet. Prepare to meet is not a goal. Mm -hmm. It's an action taken to achieve some goal. Uh, so I realize these are left over from 2009. I, I would suggest that when these are rewritten, they actually be written as a goal, which is an end result or deliverable. And measurable. Me measurable. A absolutely. And a as we've been going through this process, we've been looking at these individual things as either a strategy or a goal or an implementable item um, because you can have, they all fit into three different categories. Um, the implementable items are measurable and that's what we're truly working for. Uh, goals and strategies are nice. Uh, obviously you have to have a goal and then a strategy to meet the goal, but in the end it's the actual implementation items, the action items that matter. and that's what we're trying to root out of here first so yeah i think that's okay correct. uh so a goal is it's actionable it's measurable mm -hmm. and you know whether you met it or not at the end of the day yes yeah we, we took your your comments about exactly the 2009 plan was short on actionable and measurable uh action items so with that in mind, we're trying to create a plan that actually has measurable goals. Um, and that's part of the synthesis. Okay. So that's that's how so that this, will be viewed. This comment will be taken into account. Absolutely. For these and I suppose across the board. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other comments on the 2009 comp plan? No. Nothing there? Okay, you want to go to the next slide and we will look at the working group recommendations. Um, once again, this was on the slide. Um, if you prefer, I can go through all of them or you can just simply look at them and ask for any clarifications or make comments regarding any of them. And remember, these are overall community facilities goals. Can you give a, a brief overview of the what the county hazard mitigation plan is? Uh, yes, the county mitigation, the county hazard mitigation plan is something that the county puts together. I believe they update it every two years, I believe. And it looks at all levels of municipal and county government and develops a plan. Um, it has a number of scenarios in there. Uh, generally, your most obvious scenarios that could develop as emergency matters and lists all of the assets available to take care of that, the procedures that would be followed to meet that um, in, in, in the slew of, you know, in the slew of what you would do in an emergency, starting with the actual response to it, um, could be public notifications and the like, uh, clear to the end of the, uh, the emergency. Uh, it's a very large binder. It does take a lot of work by every municipality, but um, they put out a good plan every two years um, to make sure that we have a set of policies and procedures that everyone in the county knows how to follow. So that's basically what it is. It also addresses like known hazards to the community, mm -hmm. such as flooding. So if you have it in a hazard mitigation plan, there are more grants or funding opportunities for to address that. Like, let's say the township wanted a big generator as a emergency backup to keep their emergency operations center rolling, and we didn't have that. We could put that as a municipality in there. Our, our plan that gets submitted to the county that gets submitted to where I work. I was very involved the last time. That was done. I think it's every four years. Not Is it every four? I think it's four and it's coming up again. Yes, I, I know we've been working on it for a little while now. Chris, do you have anything to add? Because I know uh, Jeff Kelly was working on our emergency response plan. Yes. And the county would be our next 
resource for us to go to what we don't handle in house, uh, which we actually do have a very good emergency management operation in house and moving up the chain, we would contact uh, the county for additional resources uh, of what our unmet needs are at that time. But I do know we, we also have the plan in for uh, identified hazard areas. The flooding is probably our biggest one here in Pennsylvania, as you all, as everybody knows, we have locations in the township that are at flood and we, and we're aware of them. And, and I know uh, Jeff has a lot of that in the plan to, uh, to address those needs. Thank you. I, I have one comment. Um, on the item that says assess fire EMS police service needs and service areas. Mm -hmm. um, that's excellent. It's here. <laughs> it's very broad and it has uh, the most significant and direct impact on public safety. So it's, it's excellent. It's here. Um, it covers a lot of ground. It could almost be its own subject. It could almost be its own chapter in the comp plan if, you know, that were allowed structurally. Um, so my general comment is th this, this needs to have a champion who will ensure it gets done uh, and in the most effective manner. Uh, if I could, I'd like to add one word, and that would be proactively assess everything that follows. Um, what I mean by that is we have a pretty good idea of, fr from the comp plan where uh, what the development's going to be and where it's going to be. Um, so we have that knowledge because we're producing the comp plan. So we should be able to, with that, proactively assess uh, these needs and service areas. And, and then wind up not being reactive when developments land here for review. Right, we want to stay ahead of the curve as opposed to reacting to each development that comes to us piece by piece. Very just good. a comment on that, Greg, with what Mike said. I not, not only just be pro, but almost each of those could be its own category. Yeah, I mean, fire could be specific. Mm -hmm. uh, EMS and police. Absolutely. And and uh, I mean, what the police are doing, what they're going to do, what their objectives are in the next five, ten years. You know, as we're growing, we want to know what they're doing, and I think each of those could be its own category. Absolutely. Yes, remember that this is a broad brush. No, I understand. Sure. And, and this will definitely, if, I mean, if that's one of your recommendations, to me, you can make one recommendation for all three, and then create three subcommittees or committees or three individuals to oversee each one of those. Or you could do that individually for each category. The comp plan is flexible enough to do either. But as you say, what you're actually looking for is a measurable implementation. So that's the end goal there. Yes. Um, <clears throat> on number nine, on recommendation number nine, could what's the current review period? or what's the hardship that's there? It says uh, the suggestion is to <coughs> shorten review periods for community facilities and hazard mitigation recommendations. Hmm. Interesting. I did not attend that meeting, so I'm not quite sure. Do you recall, Hannah? So I think, um, and, and we do have this built out a bit further in the working group packet um, on community facilities that took place last summer. This definitely, I think, relates to opportunities, particularly around certain type of development, I think development review that might go through it. When this was discussed in the context of the working groups, if new schools are needed or a community center or an expansion of the EMS facility. This was a lot, this was a, as we've been saying, a broad brush into prioritizing certain types of development or enhancements, renovations, redevelopments that may be related to more a public service community facility oriented use. So 
um, we can definitely bring more in, send out additional detail and refer to the implementation sheet we had for this and the working group recommendation to, uh, and also we have all, all the notes from that. So can definitely expand on that further, but generally I think that's where the, the conversation had, was headed. In regards to goals four and five, that the Jarris lands, it, there's been a lot of discussion about land preservation. Um, one of the meetings there is a resident who discussed um, the opportunity for some of the land by the school by the school to be dedicated for a community facility or um, school um, swimming facility. So I, I think that is something we may want to look into, um, at least have a dis discussion about. Okay. That dovetails into the whole transfer of development rights, mm -hmm. preserving it or possibly dedicating some of it um, to community facilities. Can I ask? So just a clarifying question or follow up to that. Um, are you, in pairing that comment with four and five, are you thinking the official, updating the official map might be a way to approach that? Or is, are you yeah. speaking more I, generally? Yeah, I, I don't know what the, the exact mechanics, but um, there's a lot of land and I, I think we should have a discussion, um, ideally with the, the property owner and possibly have a workshop with them. I, I know discuss that but you know there are opportunities for land preservation there are opportunities for um, acquiring uh, some of that that land um, for transfer of development rights and whatnot um, just to have an open discussion and get feedback from residents too to see um, if it's something they would be um, interested as, as a township resident to for the property owner to do that. I don't know what the yeah. answers are. It's, it's just a, a thought. Right. And, and that would be a good, uh, perhaps the addition of explore uh, ways to, to exactly do that, to acquire land for community facilities uh, through the subdivision process, either by the official map, uh, strengthening saldo, um, something and negotiations with incentives. I, I mean, I agree it's good conversation to, to have and continue with, but I think we have to keep our mindset that often the least developable parcels are often offered up first mm -hmm. to fit this community service. Mm -hmm. And a soccer field or a baseball diamond are not well placed in the floodplain or on steep slopes. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a compromise if there are transfers occurring make sure that there's a balance of higher value property to meet the needs of the community and conserve the open space or preserve some of the attributes that we point out in other parts of the plan. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I like both comments. Um, and I, I like to come uh, insert my previous comment to, to David's and I, I guess Tim's proactively, right? So in other words, um, we know we have to update the official map. Uh, we know this land development's been proposed, right? We don't have to wait and react to what occurs during the land development process. Correct. We, as the board and as the planning commission, can proactively look at the official map and update it, right? Absolutely. Yes, yes uh, in conversation with property owners and, and hopefully with their agreement, but we can get out in front of this as opposed to react to development plans that appear before the township. Absolutely true. Any other comments on the working group recommendations? Oh. Sorry, I just um, a point of clarification on number three, when you say, when it states, uh, consider connections to facilities when reviewing uh, developments, are we speaking physical? 
Yes. Physical connections. Yes, physical connections. Um, generally speaking, trails of some sort at a minimum, sidewalks, of course, um, and of course the public road system, but uh, upgrading that if sidewalks are not available. Thank you. Any in the chat? Comment? Yes, go ahead. Hi, this is Diane Kelly. I'm sorry for joining late. I have had internet issues. Um, but I just had a question on the working group recommendations. Are they prioritized in order on this screen or are they up for discussion to be um, set into priorities? Um, they are not prioritized on the screen. That is up for discussion. Okay, thank you. Did you have a priority you wish to point out? Well, again, I joined late, so I, I apologize for that. I don't know um, what the board's discussion was to this point, but I, I do think that it's something that we should look at and potentially prioritize to, um, you know, for example, goal number three and goal number, you know, six. I mean, I just think there's priorities based on um connections for the public and certainly emergency services and ha hazard mitigation those type of things um shouldn't be as far down on the list in in some ways yeah 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 i agree with yeah. commissioner kelly D diane earlier i i emphasized uh the importance of item six um because it has such a significant and broad impact on public safety. So I would vote for six to be, be high priority. Absolutely. Um, and it, as Commissioner Kelly said, number three strikes me uh, the same. Okay. Well, let's, let's go down the line here. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy, do you have any high priorities that you wish to point out now? Three, four, and Okay. I, I think that, that number one is going to mm. No, I don't I don't think we need to make it a priority. It's already been I, I don't see that changing at all uh, with the township and, and the school district. So I mean it's on there. It, it if you look at it, it's number one, but it's it's certainly yeah, it, and it's it is important, but it's I don't think that it's I think that public safety is important. We, we've talked in, in, since I've been on this board on on uh, open space preservation. Certainly, that's been an issue. I know we've had a, a workshop on it. We've had Lehigh Valley planning. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the woman uh, came for that. So I, I, again, I would say three, four, and and six are, are also are important. Very good. Uh, obviously, hazard it, hazards an automatic. I just don't. You know, I don't think we need to prioritize it. It's just going to be an automatic. We have to do it. Yes. So, yeah. So. <clears throat> and it is for number four um, to acquire land or structures specifically for community facilities, capital C, capital F, is that specifically for some sort of a um, indoor rec center, is there something in mind there, or should that be more broad to just have um, acquire land or structures for, you know, continued community use? I, I think uh, Greg, uh, in his introduction, had one slide that had the definition of community facilities to provide the context for this discussion. Mm -hmm. If you can flip back there okay. so Diane can see it. Thank you. Two back. There you go. Nope, too far. There you go. So there you go. Uh, promote an effective continuation of opportunities, facilities, and services for parks, recreation, education, public safety, and wellness. So that's kind of a holistic approach to uh, what community facilities are for. Excellent. That that's a perfectly makes sense in that particular goal. Thank you. Sure. Monica, any priorities you wish to point out here? 
Um, I agree with previous statements. I was actually part of this community facilities working group. Mm -hmm. And um, I was a little disappointed when I saw fire EMS and police come in sixth. Not that the others aren't important, they're absolutely important. But I thought that our emergency services should rank a little more high on this uh, this list. So I definitely agree with with what my fellow commissioners. Very good. Just two things. One, there are nine. Did we come to a conclusion that these are go forward, or does anything need to be trimmed or possibly added? And as I've said to this group. Uh, on a number of occasions, I think that we should never um, put in a position like number seven um, in terms of community outreach. Um, as a collective organization, we want the community to buy into this plan. And I think to um, remove them so or put them so far down on the list uh, tends to uh, work in a countermeasure way to that goal. So you'd like to see that higher? Certainly. Yep. Tim? Um, to your question about is this what's definitely going forward, it, this is being presented similarly to how we've presented all mm -hmm. the other ones. So it could be what is not a priority, what is missing here, what could be enhanced. So definitely there is room and, and we hope to have that discussion. Yeah, I kind of look at it this way. Um, if you look at it from a process standpoint, I, I agree with Andy Flagg completely. Um, we're going to come up with a plan. It's going to be implementable. It's going to be measurable. All right. Uh, it doesn't stop there. Uh, the end of the process is where we as a board and planning commission and including the citizens assess whether we met the goals or not and, and whether it gave us a satisfactory answer. So on a list that appears as number seven, but actually it's an essential part of the process for the entire comp plan. That's the way I look at it. Yes, I think it also does refer to after the comp plan so that we continue to have and um, encourage volunteerism for, the, for as long as to we get a next comp plan. Um, it's always good to have the volunteer boards well stocked. It's always good to have the volunteer fire companies well stocked. Um, there are so many things out there that volunteers do for municipal government and their community. So it's, it's great to encourage that every day of the year. My turn. Your turn. <laughs> All right. So in general, I concur with what's been said already, but I would also add that in a, in a plan model like this, that all these items have to some extent equal merit to have their place in the plan. So I'm kind of steer against prioritizing one above the other. If they have merit to make it on the page and be part of the plan, then they're instrumental in facilitating something in the community. Absolutely. Right. When I look at this, I look at the top half as being the park and rec section, that kind of, and then the bottom half is the public safety. They're both essential to our community, but to put them together kind of dilutes one versus the other. I would. I personally would like to see a community facility and then two subs of public safety and then park rec and open space. You can't really prioritize, and I agree that with, uh, with Tim, try to prioritize two different animals mm -hmm. is really hard. So I would like to see public safety because that's what we all live here for. And then park and recs is another element of why we live here. Right. So it's, they're kind of melded together under one header, but I would like to see public safety parsed out and then everything else. And then there's some that are applicable to both, the volunteerism, mm -hmm. et cetera, like in, right in the middle of there, you know, acquiring land. 
Is it for another fire station or is it for an indoor recreation? So, so perhaps what you're looking for, since these are overall goals, mm -hmm. um, and then we have parsed it out between public safety, parks and rec, and the school district mm -hmm. as subheaders, um, perhaps moving the specific things down into their subheadings and keeping the overarching things to be the overall recommendations might be a strategy that, that mm -hmm. you'd be looking for. Right, because, I mean, there's nine of us up here or whatever, and we're all going to have different goals for our community. Mm -hmm. Park recs, we take, for too long, we take public safety for granted. Call 911, somebody shows up. Yep. But our fire departments are getting strained with their personnel, so. My priority is, is goal six. You know. Yep. So that's my two cents. Oh, that's good. I agree with um, both Tim and, and Brian's comments. And is, is there a way to have this list of recommendations and specifically note that these are not listed in order of the priority, but in fact, all goals that the township will focus on. Absolutely. And I believe we've been getting away from listing things in priority, um, unless you've specifically stated. Um, after all, when, when we complete the plan, you will have a list of actionable items. Um, they can be prioritized, um, but they'll all be there. So yeah. I, I think uh, I agree with everyone's comments. I think Greg gave us a good solution. A, a good solution is just structurally here, mm -hmm. separate all of them. Yep. Um, and they'll, they'll each have the right priority. Yeah. If you step back out at a comp plan, uh, I don't know, I can speak for myself where I can say nine out of 10 people would say the, uh, the South Whitehall government's highest priority is public safety. Um, yes. So with that understanding, it will have a high priority within this plan, but uh, we don't have to go down into the details of prioritizing line items to do it. Absolutely. And of course, once this plan is adopted and it's placed before all of you to actually begin the implementation process, part of that process will be to re-review what the priorities are. Because if you suddenly feel that perhaps something that was a high priority, things have changed. And now there's something else that has risen in priority. That's up to you to actually pursue that before anything else. So this is kind of like the snapshot in a moment of time. When you adopt it, the priorities are as they were at that moment. After that, you're gonna to have to deal with reality as it is and the comp plan will be your guide, but it's not going to be your absolute this is what's required to be done. If you feel that something else has an elevated priority, that's up to you to implement it. So somewhere we need the word flexibility in there, obviously. So obviously, yes. As you said, things do change. Things do change. Okay. Dave, you're up. Yeah. I, I think Brian summed it up, up well. Mm -hmm. I don't have much, much more to add to that, but I, I will say, um, Public safety, yes, that's a top priority. And then um, you know, development's a um, big ticket item in, in this township. So um, number four, very important. And, and number five sort of piggybacks on number four. Right. Trevor. <laughs> the perk of going last, I, I tend to agree with what was said previously. Um, I will say, I mean, it always comes back to the people, right? So mm -hmm. to me, you know, number seven is important. I think the township, between, between six and seven, it, it takes aspects of volunteering or, or being interested in that type of work. So we currently lack depth. You know, if you think about like a depth charter at our work professionally, we're always looking for the next few folks to to take over or help volunteers. So I think we really need to work on 
six and seven. And of course, the other stuff's important too. I, I agree with Brian and David, you know, we could take all these and have, have various discussions of why they're all, all number one. So, but for me, it's, it's six and, you know, six and seven, and number one's all part of it with the school district, but rally the people and, and really be champions for this plan. Very good. Thank you. Any comments? No. Any comments from the public? No. Herb? Very good. Move to the next slide. And as I alluded to earlier, uh, this is now broken down into the three subgroups. So we can look at what had been in appropriate for each subgroup of the two comp plan goals and the working group recommendations and move them down into these. What we'll be doing now is going to the parks and recreation. So if you wanna slip to the next slide, we'll just take a quick review of the 2009 comp plan goals for parks and recreation. And if anybody has any, wishes any clarification So what I'll do now is, if no one wants clarification, we'll hold the comments until we can get the Parks and Rec uh, experts up here to take your uh, comments or questions. So we can move to the next one, which is the future LV goals. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the 2009 comp plan recommendations. The first one was goals, second one was recommendations. Greg, on our official map, is there a connection to the Ironton Rail Trail? There is not. It's strictly the, the only trail connection mentioned on our current um, official map is the Jordan Creek Greenway. Thank you. Any other clarifications requested? Move to the next slide. And this is the future LV goals. This, this is the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission's uh, recommendations uh, in the county comprehensive plan. And for the most part, they can apply equally to our comprehensive plan. Well, I'll let our expert do a presentation and uh, take any questions or comments. So, next slide. Alrighty, hello everyone. Um, my name is Ashley Eichlin. Um, I'm an associate landscape designer from Barry Isaac and Associates. Uh, joining us virtually is our project manager, uh, Stephanie Stephanie Molesky. Um, she's also from Barry Isaac and Associates. Um, also involved with the project is uh, Chief Landscape Architect Brian Smith, who unfortunately couldn't be joining us tonight, as well as uh, Lindsay Taylor, who is a certified park and recreation planner. So tonight I am here just to give just a quick overview and just a brief update on the South Whitehall Township Parks uh, Recreation Open Space and Trail Plan. Um, so 
uh, what I'll be doing is just briefly um, giving us a little refresher on what a park recreation open space <laughs> and trail plan is, uh, what has been completed so far in the planning process, uh, what direction we'll be headed in preparation for the public meeting, which will be held next Thursday, which I highly recommend that all of you attend. <laughs> Um, and uh, finally, just open up just for some brief discussion or any clarification questions. So just starting with our first slide right here, um, as you can see, this was a um, definition that we came up with to define park recreation and open space, park recreation, open space and trail plan. So I'll let you guys take a quick look at that. Um, but on this slide, um, some of the big breakaway or big takeaways um, from this definition include that our work um, includes or consists of um, a pretty heavy like information gathering process uh, to find ways to improve quality of life from a park recreation open space and trail perspective. Um, so we're not only relying on our findings, uh, but we're also re relying heavily on community input as well. Uh, so we are currently working with the study committee. Um, so few of them you may already know. <laughs> um, and uh, so they're, the study committee is just helping us stay on uh, the appropriate course for the greater good of the community. Uh, we are also working with the public. Uh, so we are offering public surveys and we also have the public meetings um, to help give residents and uh, park and recreation users um, in the township the opportunity to voice their interests and uh, for what they'd like to see in this plan. So in addition to our information gathering um, and public input, we are also going to be referencing the NRPA, uh, which is the National Recreation and Park Association. Uh, the National Park and Rec um, National Recreation and Park Association, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, is an online database uh, that allows municipalities to input their current uh, recreational uh, data and it allows municipalities to essentially com make comparisons with other populations of similar size and of similar region. Um, so um, I'll be going into that just in a little more detail in a little bit. Uh, but using all this information, uh, we are going to be coming up with a plan that um, acknowledges where the township may be deficient um, in regards to their parks, recreation, open space, and trails. Um, but we're also going to assist in providing recommendations as to how to address these deficiencies. Um, so this plan will become a hopefully a valuable guide uh, to the township um, for that for the township to reference over the next decade. Uh, so we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So this is just a, a quick little graphic of our uh, planning process. Uh, so since February, we have been working with the study committee on the um, the pro project, um, the park recreation open space uh, and trail project. Um, so like I said, this slide just gives us a quick little glimpse of uh, where we are. You can see the nice little red star. So our project so far has consisted primarily of doing background research on the township and its current recreational programming, um, though a large component of this study so far has been uh, inventorying and analyzing the 26 uh, parks and open spaces. Um, so I will get to that in uh, just a minute, uh, but you can just see the different elements that we, will, um, we have been and will be exploring in this process. Next slide, please. Right, so to grasp a better understanding um, of the existing nature of township parks, um, open space and trails, uh, we've visited each park and open space um, and inventoried their current states. So um, as you can see here, um, this is the listing of all the parks um, and open spaces um, and trail <laughs> that we have visited to date. Uh, so. As part of our report, we will be individually highlighting each park and compiling all of our findings into um, essentially what is existing on site, the condition in, uh, the conditions of, um, of each of the elements, uh, as well as quantifying the elements as well. Uh, with all that information then, we will be synthesizing that um, into a, um, a set of matrices and that will allow us then to compare uh, the, the parks um, and their existing states and determine where the uh, deficiencies lie. 
Um, in addition to that, uh, this is where the NRPA comes back into play. Uh, we will also be uh, referencing the National Recreation and Park Association um, park metrics. And so we will be able to make comparisons to other um, communities that, that have similar populations and be able, and that will be able to give us a, um, a baseline essentially of some recommendations of where uh, the township may want to consider going um, in regards to improving their um, parks and open space. Um, so just as like one little example that we managed to pull out, um, just to, to pull this out here. Um, so from the NRPA, um, agencies with a, a population of approximately 20,000 people uh, state that they typically have one pickleball court per uh, 3,446 residents. And currently the township doesn't have any. So um, granted, this is uh, just you know, a, a set of recommendations for the uh, for the township to, uh, to explore some like a, a little bit more in the future, um, but these standards aren't a a hard steadfast. You must follow these. Um, you know, obviously you want to take into account you know public input and um, you know all that just to figure out what exactly the community is truly interested in. Excuse me. What is pickleball? I'm sorry. Sure. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there you go. Um, yeah. So basically, <laughs> essentially, it is a kind of small, for lack of better ways to describe it, it's a smaller scale version of tennis, but you use like a different size ball, almost kind of like if I'm not mistaken, like a like a wiffle ball, like, and you use smaller paddles. So it is, it's very popular in certain areas. I've, I've heard it being very popular in like Maryland. They've had like competitions. So great. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yep. Not a problem. Before you, before you move on. <laughs> since, since where you were at the, uh, your analysis of all our parks. Mm -hmm. is, does that analysis also include the connections to that park? Like, I know it's a trail plan. Yeah. Do they can, like, how do people get to those parks? Is that part of that? Sure. Um, so we will be evaluating that to some degree, yes. Um, so one thing that we might explore a little bit more in detail is a, like a walkability study, for example. So um, just that we would be doing some, um, we could explore some mapping essentially to see like how far of a walk um, or like how many residents have like a 10 minute walk, let's say to um, certain parks, just as an example. So that would be something that we could explore a little bit further. Um, at least right now in the process, we've been focusing on the parks like just at that level, but that is something that we would definitely explore in the future. As a day, my day job is a transportation planner. I'm always oh, yeah. looking of how people get places, Definitely. all modes, multimodal. And it's great to have a park, but if there's a 40 foot wide collector road oh, to get yeah. there, that could be a problem. Exactly. So it, it's always, and there's ways to mitigate that with traffic calming and stuff, but I'm very interested in that aspect. I'm interested in the parks, but actually <laughs> how people get to the parks and get home from those parks. Oh, of course. Definitely. Thank you. Yep, sure. I, I do have a, I'm going good, good, Tim. So one question on, on the assessment here, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a name to it yet, but does this include the new acquisition south of 22? It's undeveloped. Um, so it does not. Um, if I believe we, I'm thinking of the same location. Agland right now. Yeah. So right now it does not include that, that location now. So, um, but that is something that we can discuss with the committee to see if that's something we want to um, include in the study. A great presentation. I just have a question. You said this nine month process results in a report policymakers use to make decisions on how to spend funds. Not once did you talk about money. Yes. Not once right. in your presentation. Yes. You know, as a commissioner, I need to know some numbers. Mm -hmm. we're, we're entering budget season. Oh, of course. And, and uh, so, so that's got to be built into a comp plan and obviously a budget and all that. When, when do you expect to have something to to the to the commissioners or to to Mike to mm -hmm. present to Herb to present to the BOC. Sure. 
So that would be something that would be later on in the process. Um, so what we are doing right now is more of the like the public input um, uh, gathering process. So that would be more towards later on. Um, so I would I don't want to give a, a definite date right now, um, but it would be at least a couple months before we would get. I had asked for a study to be done to our seniors and what they want. I still haven't seen it or heard of anything about that being done. Sure. Could you update me on that? The study on the seniors. On what do the seniors, like, like Dave brought up, what's pickleball? If we're hearing all the seniors want yeah. pickleball, what are we doing about it? Yeah. I've asked for a study to be done. I was, I was told it would take a couple months. That was a couple months ago. Yeah. I've heard nothing about it from the Parks Department, Parks and Rec. Right. So sure. I become a little impatient when oh, things yeah. are moving along, but we're not really addressing it with the community. What does the community want? Right. Not what you want. Oh, what course. does the community want of course. so that they can come back to the board and say, you know, this is what we need to do. And if it's IE, uh, uh, pickleball or whatever, sure. you know, we accommodate, the, 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 you know, we have great parks for the little kids as they go over to cover mm -hmm. bridge, you go over in the morning, it's packed, which is great, but that's only a small segment or a segment of our population. Of course. And we look, I look at it as the total population. Oh, of course. We have to, we have to, you know, please the total population. So, so I think what you're saying, Dave, is uh, how does this address the full demographics, including seniors? Yes. So actually, so what we've been doing, uh, which actually, if Rob, can I actually have you go to the next slide, please? Because that, actually that'll get into that a little bit further. So what we are actually doing right now is we've opened up a public survey, um, which actually we've um, offered it in two formats. So we do offer it in an online format, understanding that there are going to be individuals who do want to um, provide their input, you know, via, um, you know, digitally, no problem. But we do also offer a physical uh, paper format as well. Um, so just as an example, um, uh, Mike actually brought the paper surveys to the Allentown Band concert, where it was my understanding he was actually able to um, get some feedback from more of the senior population. And so that was, um, that's actually just the start of our means of getting some of the public input to at least diversify, to diversify <laughs> our, um, our input. So it's not just a one set of demographic. So we are in definitely more of that um, public uh, information gathering stage still. So, um, which does bring me to my next point about the recommendation stage is still very early for us as part of the park recreation, open space and trail plan. So it, like I mentioned, still very early to provide recommendations, but it, we are doing everything, or we are doing what we can at this time to try to at least, um, you know, grab as much attention to all demographics to make sure that we get a very holistic um, perspective and of the interest. I, I can appreciate that, but as, mm -hmm. as we said earlier, or Greg made a comment, we, we hope to have this wrapped up by December. Sure. This year, right. 2022. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as a commissioner, I don't want you to come to me in December or, or Mike and say, this is what we need in money when the budget will be approved in December of 2022. Sure. So oh, sure. I'm sure Mike's aware of that, but maybe you could move it along. Sure. Um, a, a moment ago, uh, Herb Bender either had a comment or question. I don't know if that moment's passed Herb or... Correct. So we can definitely um, uh, relabel it for sure, definitely. Um, the intention at least was to understanding the master planning process um, that Kohler Ridge was going under. We kind of put it under that kind of community. Yeah, I'm part. just saying because it hasn't been approved for anything sure. yet. So to label it correctly, yeah. I think we should move it under the open space. Sure, yeah, not, that can definitely be adjusted though. Okay, sure, thank you. Right. You know what, I just wanted to add, um, to answer your questions, um, Mike and Dave. Um, during our, our prop plan meetings, the steering commission, um, we got together and we were discussing different ways we could uh, implement senior outreach. We we're talking about going to the different senior groups within our township. We had a couple contact people that were leaders yes, of those definitely. groups. So um, um, it's it was discussed, and hopefully that will be a, a good starting point to to get to you know to get more senior outreach. Thanks. One of the Thank things I'd like to see from 
the facilities and open space inventory and analysis, we have a lot of fixed assets, right? You have a tennis court, you have a soccer field. What can we do from the inventory and analysis to determine are any of these spaces flexible? I'll bring this up again, but can you restripe a tennis court to allow for pickleball to be played and all of a sudden you've created mixed use and mm -hmm. you're satisfying multiple people within the community. So I think it's important to understand what the assets are, how flexible the assets are, and then make determinations and understanding what money you need and all of the things that come from that. Yeah. I okay. Go, uh, Am I able to off, off of that? Uh, one other step would be in that analysis, seeing if those resources that we have are meeting the needs or do we have more resources than what we need? Yes. But also making sure we're in conjunction with the school district and what facilities that they have available or that the township coordinates with on their like, sport fields or whatever they may be. That, that is actually something that we've um, been discussing a bit during our meetings as well. So um, I think if I'm not mistaken, that might be something that we'll explore a little bit more in, upcom in our upcoming meetings, but that is definitely something that has definitely come up in discussion. So thank you. I, I have a couple of comments. Finished. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, okay. Um, so I really like the benchmarking with the national organization. I like the fact that it's all data-based. Um, and I know you're only partway through. Everything you've presented so far, uh, it, it is or it strikes me as it's an assessment of uh, the township as it stands today and our current parks and recreation programs. This is the comp plan discussion, which looks out 10 years. So how will this extrapolate to what the township needs over the long term? Sure. Yeah, so I think a lot of it, um, we'll be able to get a lot of our information um, from the public input, for one. Um, so that will at least give us like some indicator of what the public is interested in and will um, at least give us some direction of where the community is headed. Um, also speaking with the, uh, the study committee as well, um, you know, the study committee will have a little bit of um, some input as well to of, you know, some things that are coming up, like different um, bits of like programming and whatnot. So, you know, between those different elements, it, that'll kind of help us um, get a little more of a holistic and more um, forward thinking uh, type of, um, of a, a report so it's not just a very current um type of report it's a something that can be utilized for future once again it's proactive exactly <laughs> exactly okay. this is stephanie from barry i set can i am i heard yep can we can hear you Steph. <laughs> okay um part of a park rec and open space trail study is looking at your current status of where you are with your park and rec system what the current needs are of your community and anticipating how your community is going to grow and how those needs will grow. And what we do is look at uh, 5, 10, 15 years, what the community is going to need and how you can address those needs. And we also look at what that will cost and time out any improvements uh, in a phasing plan so that you can progressively move forward in improving your system and meeting the needs of your community um, without uh, investing everything at one time. So they are things that we will be looking at, but as Ashley has stated right now, we are still in the inventory uh, portion of the study and they will come at later stages when we start to do the recommendations, uh, confirming the goals of the community and then looking at how we move forward. Great, thanks Seth. I, I believe Mike Kukitz is online and wants to say something. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Mike. All right, good evening, everyone. Yeah, it kind of already uh, has been said even since I, I typed that in there, but I just wanted to kind of reiterate, um, I don't know if we can go back two or three slides there to that timeline, um, but a few months ago we had said that we were working together this community survey so that we could gather as much public input as possible. Um, and is right where we are right now with the um, facility analysis and public input collection process. So we have been 
it probably took the steering committee a good six weeks or so to finalize the survey. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth and discussion, you know, about what the questions um, and, and the steering committee. I'm not sure if that's been uh, discussed, but it's myself. Uh, it's Dave Manhart, uh, Randy Cope, Commissioner Kelly, Commissioner Hodges um, and the Barry Isett team. So we're, we're looking at, you know, what's our best route to get as much input from people of all ages and abilities throughout our community. Um, we did hand out close to 150 uh, copies to the senior population at the Allentown Band Concert. Um, we have it available in publication racks at the park. Uh, we're making it available at um, our Walk with the Doc events with St. Luke's that often has senior population attending. Um, also our Zumba classes, our yoga classes, all of those um, have seniors in it as well. So we're, we're not trying to just get feedback from youth. I wanna say quite honestly, at this point, we've been really reaching out to the adults, parents and grandparents um, in the community to try to get that feedback. Um, that being said, we will be sending it out to um, everyone that's enrolled in our rec desk system. Um, we will be posting additional flyers at some of our smaller pocket parks, and we are really trying to get as much feedback from the community on what they want to see, you know, in the next three, five, ten years. Um, and then what you'll see is later on in this plan is when we'll start to put together the recommendations and cost estimates and really start to have those discussions as far as, you know, what does the board want to see here over the next five or ten years. But we're, we're in my opinion, we're close to that. Uh, by close, I mean a few months away. Um, but uh, again, we are just, uh, the Barry Isaac team is reviewing all of our current facilities, the condition uh, that they're in, the state that they're in, um, accessibility, all of those things. Uh, and at the same time, we are gathering as much feedback as possible from the, the residents in our community. And this is Stephanie again. I also wanted to point out that we're doing the exhaustive inventory of all of the township facilities but we also look at the other facilities that are in the region. So the agreement with the school district and looking at what the school facilities are, uh, any county parks or any other private uh, parks or open space that is available, uh, state lands or anything of that nature, not just in the township, but in the greater area to look and see what you need in your township or that is available to your township residents and then seeing if it's something that the township needs to provide or is there another organization that is already providing that. So our assessment, uh, you know, actually focused directly on all of the township facilities, but we are looking at the greater area and also what other facilities are available that are not owned or operated by the township. Thank you. Commissioner Kelly, um, may I just make a brief comment? I believe it was Commissioner Kennedy who asked about um, resources and I believe one of the questions on the survey was that we were asking residents if they were in agreement with township expending funds for increasing parks. So that is included in our survey. We should have that information. Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So just to just to wrap up, just about our public survey, um, you know, as I've kind of heard a little bit about it already, um, it is offered both on an online platform, which we use SurveyMonkey, um, but it is also in a paper format as well. Uh, so the paper format, um, after discussing with the steering committee, the paper format is more of an uh, an abbreviated version, um, whereas the uh, SurveyMonkey online version has just a few more extra questions um, and I did bring a couple extra copies of the um, paper copy so if anybody's interested in taking it after the meeting feel free to see me <laughs> so I do have that um, and yeah so uh, it does look like after today we do have a little over 50 responses uh, there will be more information provided at the public meeting as well um, so, but it does seem like we are getting a uh, steady, steady um, increase of. When did the survey start? The survey uh, went out around Memorial Day. Uh, Memorial so this Day. This is weekend. the first time I've seen it. It. But, so. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know I'm out of touch a lot of times, but you know, I just was wondering. So it is my understanding that the um, see the township has 
uh, post it on the Facebook page. Uh, Mike, uh, if you're still on, feel free to uh, agree, disagree, but I believe it was on the Facebook page. And the web And the website. web page. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you, Monica. Um, and on the, the Township website as well. Um, and then we also have um, a little flyer uh, that has access to the QR code as well as paper copies at Coverbridge Park. And then like Mike mentioned, uh, there will be a couple other um, uh, pocket parks that will have the um, flyer posted as well with the survey information. Okay, thank you. And I believe, was that Brian that asked that question? Yes. Uh, okay. Hi, Brian. Um, so yes, it, it was just uh, three weeks ago or so that it went out and we're slowly uh, getting it out more, getting more responses back. Um, okay. Has been on our social media website. Uh, I believe there's even uh, some information on the bottom of a sewer refuse bill uh, relating to the study and public meeting dates. So um, the next four to six weeks, we'll, we'll really uh, push to get as much information as we can from, from the community. Yeah, I kind of abandoned social media, so <laughs> that's probably a reason why. As of now, do you know how many paper surveys you've received in comparison to online surveys? Yes, uh, let's see. I believe as of today, I had a little over 35 paper surveys. Yeah, so which was a little more than I anticipated, um, honestly, but not too bad. So then... So then there's 26 online ones. I think you said uh, you had 51. Yeah, it, it was yeah, it was in the 20s of what we received online. What's the anticipated shutdown close off? Uh, date or number? Date. Date, or, so or number. <laughs> so for the date, um, we do not have a finalized date just yet. Uh, so that is something that we'll be we will be discussing with the committee. Um, though for a set number. Um, we don't have a, a shutdown <laughs> by any means, the more the merrier. Um, however, it, there is a recommendation um, to aim to get roughly about like 10% of the population. So that is that is our goal. So, so fingers crossed, but we'll be pushing to, to get more surveys in. Is it possible to get, you said a couple parks this will be posted at? Yes. I mean, is it a big ask to get it? at all the parks i'm just uh, asking the question i mean i i think of my neighborhood you know or, or these various pocket parks yeah. you know there's there's families that are going to those mm. every night and if we just hit a couple but we don't know which parks they are mm. we could miss a variety mm. of demographics of, of all of all ages of, you know in my neighborhood pretty wide variety and are constantly out walking and things so sure. just a, a general comment yeah. i would especially if we just do a yard sign with a qr code sure. i mean you'll at least get awareness out there and you could also put if you don't have a smartphone mm -hmm. contact the township and i'm sure somebody in staff would if somebody called they would fill it out ask them the questions right there so and i think a lot of these pocket parks have signs now of what the name of the park is so i mm -hmm. mean you could like tape it to the sign or, or something I, I can't imagine anyone's gonna be too upset about that or sure. we'll definitely with something we can and make do. sure each park has something thank, thank you. you appreciate it thanks i've seen some municipalities they actually um have a post with a like a you know hard plastic folder mm -hmm. with pamphlets yes in them that's always an option. I know there's a cost with that, and people might grab them and throw them. So I've seen other municipalities do that. So the, um, it is my understanding that that is actually done at Cover Bridge Park already. Um, so, but that that's obviously only one park. Um, so, but that's something that you know we can discuss with Mike and Monica and Diane and the rest of the committee as well, just to see if if that's something of interest. So, for sure. Do we move forward? Please, I would yes. just yes. I just want to note we have about 40 minutes left and a bit of ground to cover. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll keep rolling. No pressure. <laughs> so don't worry, I'll talk really fast. <laughs> All right, so next slide, please. Alrighty, so Greg already briefly uh, went over um, these recommendations, um, but just to uh, kind of 
I'll say reiterate this just a little bit. So since we are still in the information gathering stage of this uh, process, we are not ready to make these recommendations at this time. Um, however, after re reviewing the 2009 uh, joint comp plan um, and the future LV goals, um, we currently don't see anything that stands out that's contradictory or inconsistent with at least the current direction that we're headed in the planning process in regards to parks and recreation. However, um, you know, we will definitely, you know, keep Mike with your uh, comment earlier about making sure that the goals are measurable and have that end result. That's definitely something that we'll be looking into. Um, and yeah, we're definitely going to explore each of these recommendations to make sure that they're more uh, current and more um, and forward thinking so that they do address uh, the future of South Whitehall Township Parks, Recreation, Open Space and Trails. So, yeah, so at this point, um, these next few slides, probably if you want to just uh, click right through them, that's fine. Um, really, the only thing that uh, we actually added was just a, one small comment to, uh, let's see here. Uh, Rob, can I have you go back one slide, please? Um, was just the the first recommendation on this slide was just rather than develop the Jordan Creek Greenway, just continue to develop the Jordan Creek Greenway. But once again, like I said, we're still you know very much in the early stages of providing recommendations at this time. So you know, these are things that were um, recommendations and goals that we're going to explore further uh, down the line. Okay, and. This plan also dive into how many more employees that would take us to also to be able to accommodate all this yes so that would be something that we would explore a little bit further we would okay. um, look into addressing um, the maintenance that would go along with it as well okay yeah thank you money and man hours money and man hours <laughs> <laughs> I think we have next slide please Alrighty, so the last item that I just wanted to address is our public meeting. So we do have our uh, second public meeting, which will be held next Thursday. As I mentioned, would love to see all of you there. <laughs> um, so it will be held here at seven o'clock. Um, and of course, there will be a virtual option, as we know. Um, so uh, just as a, a brief little overview, our intention is to delve a little more deeper into each individual park and our findings. Um, so it's going to be more of an in-depth presentation. So all of our observations, as well as, as exploring some of the um, possible like uh, deficits that we might have noticed it throughout the parks, um, but then also exploring um, some of the solutions that you know we can explore as well. So, are all your public meetings the fourth Thursday of the month? I have to review the schedule. Um, that is something I can get back to you on. Because if it is, I would yeah. suggest moving one of them because oh. I can never attend these because that's yeah. our full commission meeting night where I work. Sure. So it, it's always good to have at least one of the public meetings at a different date. Definitely. People's schedules. So just that's, food for thought. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, I'll definitely like take a look at the schedule for sure. I had a question on um, advertising for this upcoming public meeting and I'm not even sure who to address it to but have have has township staff or I don't know if that would be you Ashley um, sure. discussed ideas on how to um, make the public more aware of this upcoming meeting I know the last one was um, you know we had good attendance but we were looking really to get as many members of our community involved as possible and I didn't know if there was um, any additional avenues that we could take to really do a you know strong outreach mm -hmm. sure so Diane um, the one of the main uh, means of advertising at least right now has been through that uh, that flyer that advertises both the survey and also uh, the public meeting um, and also as uh, Trevor suggested um, about possibly posting all the flyers at all the pocket parks that might be something that we can explore a little bit further 
um, to just really make sure that we get, you know, all areas of the uh, township um, you know, notified and hopefully well rep represented at the public meeting. Um, that is at least the one that I'm aware of right now. Um, but I, I'm not sure, Mike, if it, there's going to be any postings on Facebook or on on the website. I'm not sure. Yeah, I have be. I have two posts scheduled right now. One to go out on the 19th and one to go out on the 22nd the night before to try to give a little extra push. Um, as I just mentioned too, we're planning to send it out through um, the summer playground program participants, which are you know a lot of younger families in the area, um, and really just continuing to, to try to keep up with the flyers. The flyers that we keep putting down at Coverbridge Park are disappearing. So I know that people who are frequenting our park um, down there are getting the information and hopefully you know we, we yield a result from that and see a higher participation uh, at our next public meeting. I'm trying to remember, I, I believe we had maybe 12 or so people, 12 to 15 um, at, at our first one, if I remember correctly. So I would definitely like to see more. Thank you, Mike. I didn't know if um, maybe we could utilize, I know we have um, the next door platform that we can use, and I know the police department um, has some outreach with the crime watch groups also. I didn't know if that was an avenue um, that you had considered or if that might be um, a helpful way to spread the word. Absolutely. Yeah, I can speak with PD tomorrow and uh, see if they can help get it through the next door. That's a great idea. Great, thank I, you. I believe we can move on to schools and then I believe Hannah is going to talk about public outreach. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Light ahead. Do we hit schools? There we go. I'm going to do a quick overview of this. Uh, slide we have is the 2009 clan plan recommendation which as uh, mr kennedy pointed out continue to partner with the school district to uh, monitor growth uh, teacher ratio classroom size and other facilities are capable of adding uh, adequately handling the population while providing quality service um, that does dovetail nicely into the parks and rec because the school district is a big partner in our park and rec programs uh, next one up um, the future LV does list a number of goals with regard to schools. Um, they're listed right there. Uh, they tend to be a little more generic uh, for all municipalities, but they equally apply here. So we have Mr. Steve Walk of Parkland School District with us to uh, do a very quick presentation and then field any questions that you might have. Just to go over it real quick again, we'll you know continue our partnership uh, with the township, hopefully to provide the best facilities that we can for everyone here. One thing that I did want to bring up after hearing about looking at field usage, uh, areas for play, the future of Troxel. Uh, that is an unknown. Uh, that building does have a full-size gym. There's two ball fields there, two lacrosse fields and uh, one area that could be used for uh, soccer. So just to keep in mind, you know, through the unfortunate fact that that building property may go away, that's space that's lost. Um, again, it's an unknown in the future what may happen with that, uh, but there is a lot of space there that the township uh, could utilize. Uh, two of those ball fields there, I believe are Field of Dreams uh, areas that in the past, the township, South Whitehall Township, in conjunction with Parkland, uh, created those two ball fields and maintained them. So that's something to consider for the future. Uh, but again, uh, we will continue to work with the township uh, together for your camps and various other activities uh, that occur in our buildings. As a school district of three municipalities, uh, you see a need, not necessarily in South Whitehall, but maybe cross municipalities of another elementary school or other facilities. I know we recently built two elementary schools and as growth, it's not happening just in South Whitehall, Upper McCungee, North Whitehall's 
emerging. So, yeah, just that, your thoughts. That, I, a lot of this is unknown. I know. Yeah, but, it, and that and that would again would depend upon the growth in the future as to whether or not new facilities would be built uh, throughout the district. So that that I do not know at this point. Well, I don't think anybody does. Yeah. We, you know, we, we, when we looked at the, the Jandal and veterans when I was on the board, it was oh, because of the growth down there. there. That's where it all was. And if you d drive down there, you can still see it. Uh, there's nothing going on up north. W two of the reasons are sewer and water. Uh, that's an issue. But we haven't seen the growth, or when I say we, at Parkland up north versus, and, it, and you can always redistrict if they ever had to. There isn't a growth up north versus down, down in the southern tier. Um, the rumors of the high school being, you know, another high school. Uh, I've been on the board up until December of last year. That is totally false. There's room at the high school if they had to expand, as Steve can tell you. There's a, they designed the building that way that another wing can come out the back. Um, one thing I want to address, and, and um, Steve and I have had conversations over the years, is first and foremost in the Parkland School District are the Parkland students. And I say that as the three entities, the three municipalities. Um, I've had many, many calls as a board member to to get on Steve's case because they need space. They want to use the basketball court. They want to use the, not so much the fields as the the inter, inside. First and foremost are the Parkland students. Now, certainly some of those are South White Hall Township residents, students. But you know, with inclement weather and you know, South White Hall might want to have their basketball, Parkland students take priority. That creates an issue. I've had meetings with Steve from residents calling me and saying, we gotta, we gotta get in there. How are we gonna have our kids? And, uh, you know, and these are South Whitehall kids, but Parkland's first. Unfortunately, that's you know, the nature of the beast. It leads to a, a further discussion down the road of maybe, and, and Dave alluded to it a little bit earlier, that to look for, quote, a community center down the road. Um, because it, it, it would benefit South Whitehall Township specifically, um, and it would free up, and we wouldn't be at, at the mercy of Parkland, and they've been a great help, obviously, and they will continue to be, but again, if they've got, the girls need cheerleading and they need the gym, they're going to get it over anybody else, because, again, as a Parkland uh, club or, or uh, activity. So it's something that down the road, uh, and I say down the road, I mean, we need to look at as a township and say, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's because we're growing and our and our population is growing here. Um, younger kids coming in, they're going to want to do more activity, more sports, you know, more. Uh, and uh, and not necessarily at, at Parkland. Not every student goes to Parkland, obviously. Uh, so therefore, it creates an opportunity down the road for South Whitehall Township to look at uh, a quote community need. Uh, as I said earlier, in the parks and recs, and also in the community facilities. So, as Dave pointed out, maybe a, a and I'm not saying specifically across from the high school, but I'm just saying, yeah, you know, he, he used a pool facility, you know, as a township. So, just something to keep in mind. And, and I know Steve's, he pulls his hair out on those things, <laughs> trying to accommodate everybody, uh, the North Whitehall residents, the South Whitehall residents, and certainly Upper Mukunji with in the in the schools. So, kudos to you for doing a great job. But again, as our population grows, as as so do the others, you know, there's only just so much space. So, so given that you you see the future LV goals, we we've already seen the the 2009 comp plan recommendation. Is there anything uh, that you might wish to add to these? Um, I guess I'll just a quick question, if I if I may. Is there is there any dis discussion or look at like aging aging school infrastructure? I don't know if I I don't see that as a a future goal. Uh, I, obviously, I know some new elementary schools and, and things have been improved and built, um, but I also know there's other assets out there for the district that are aging and, and older. <clears throat> we we've we've done several renovations. Um, we do projects such as HVAC replacements, so we are on top of those projects as best as we can. Wasn't saying that. that yeah. you know, I know you're on top of it for sure. Yeah. Space, the need for space and population growth. 
that gets reviewed as it as it comes up. Yes. Any comment from the public? No. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Oh. And now we'll bring Chris back. Next slide. There we go. Emergency response. Um, these are the 2009 comp plan goals. You've all had these to review, so unless you have any comments or questions. Chris, do you see anything here that jumps out at you with this set? Yeah, um, no, we, we, I think there's a lot of good stuff in there already. Uh, things I think need to be looked at. First off, right now we have an excellent volunteer core uh, at all the fire stations and um, not to go out and say we're adequately staffed right now with volunteers because you don't want to ever take your foot off the gas with volunteers because it's a uh, it's a very influx program as you know with volunteers and anything um as i came to the township i found that our fire departments are doing very well especially in comparison to other departments throughout the county or or neighboring communities uh we're, we're doing pretty good on that um, as far as like on, on two, looking at the difference between paid or full-time services, obviously, uh, as long as we stay with the volunteer community that's able to handle it, I would always suggest we stay with our volunteers because they're, they're doing such a good job. And quite frankly, it's when you go to a career staff department, your personnel amounts become lower and your costs become higher. It's just a, a, a nature of the beast with uh, a career fire service. Um, the other things I was looking at and, and seeing in your talking about community facilities is at some point uh, thinking about a, a, a township owned or built fire station. Um, more, right now, uh, greener walls and woodlawn are literally stone's throw from each other. So looking to move a... Uh, and, and create a facility somewhere in development. I don't know if that is something that we we could look at as like if we acquire or get some type of land for community serve a community place, and the space is big enough to put a fire station on that same parcel or whatnot, or we want them in different locations. There's a lot of things that went through my head on that as I was listening and thinking about that. Um, part of me says that's that's a great idea. And then part of me is also going to say it's a bad idea because now I things I was thinking of also um, is people getting to the community center and now fire trucks responding out. Maybe maybe that's not such a good idea, but that would all depend on on the property layout. It could be a good idea and that might be one way of going about it. Um, and then somewhere in the future, see what we could do for staffing and staffing of apparatus. I know in, in Pennsylvania, there's a lot of different programs that are, and with the safer grants and stuff, our, our, several of our stations are already doing some staffing and having uh, those locations. So uh, a new fire station would be built as uh, with the facilities of a career fire station because volunteers are doing the same type of work, just not working at the same, you know, at the same full-time paid jobs. So uh, them having overnight duty stations and whatnot, a lot of departments have gone to on-duty crews, and and that those have been filled by uh, by the volunteers also. If you could locate a new, let's say in the future we need a new fire station, where would you put it in this township? I would think somewhere out out west, like more towards this area where we are out. Uh, yeah, in a uh, near the township building out in this location somewhere. Um, Citronia is pretty good on the south side and the way our, our township runs. Um, yes, I, I would think I would think more of a westerly or, or west to north. Now we do have um, Triclover that covers us to to part of the west and part of the north. So uh, that's one of our companies we do we do work with. 
Uh, obviously, they're at North Whitehall Station Department, but uh, we work well with them also. And um, but I, I would think more out towards this area where we're at right now. How much, how much area does Triclover cover, or how does that response happen? Does everybody come, or does it, it depends on how the system set up? On uh, we we go by a box system. Mm -hmm. um, I have I actually have a map in my office that has it broken down into the box system of whose first due area it is. Greener Walls has a specific first due area. Woodlawn has a specific first two area, and so does Triclover and Citronia. Depending on what the call is in that area, you'll get your first due piece or your first due response from the district apparatus, and then the additional companies will respond in as as needed for whatever setup. Because um, we we've been actually with the fire departments, I've been talking about box systems and. And, it, and building out some of our alarms. And it, it seems like, uh, I think, again, to reiterate, I think we're doing very good within the township, but, uh, you know, getting some mutual aid in, it's, uh, we have to look and see when we need additional resources, how, how we're getting those in. Is, is Triclover, I know you have conversations with them. Yes. Because uh, they cover a part of our township. Or is their volunteerism as strong as our three Fire companies? Uh, they they actually have some uh, uh, issues getting coverage during the day. So what they have done on uh, on in in our township and also uh, I believe in in the other townships they're covering is they've gone to basically what's called a double like a double dispatch system. So if they get a call in Tri Clover's area in South Whitehall Township, and I want to say i think it's like during the week from it's either 5 a.m or 6 a.m till 6 at night they if it's only tri clovers getting dispatched they'll automatically send greener walls with them or citroni who's ever the closest district in the in that location so we're we're actually addressing right that that need that even if if they if they're tight and they can't get out we still have someone responding okay Thank you. Have you so I, I would agree. I mean, looking at Green and Walls and Woodlawn, like they're they're well situated. They've got a lot of young recruits. It's good to see. Have you seen a positive impact from uh, the addition of the, the tax item a few years ago, the emergency response tax? Yes, uh, it, it's them. it's allowed us to do a, a lot more. Uh, I, I believe it's it's given us a a, a budget to work with um especially like like is it enough is is anything ever enough <laughs> especially with what we're all dealing with now even just you know like just point out fire apparatus and driving them it's everything's expensive right now um i think i think personally the that fire tax is a good idea and has worked more to the benefit than not because it gives a solid base going into this volunteer fire companies without disappearing somewhere like it doesn't get reallocated fire taxes fire taxes put into fire tax and if we happen to not spend it all it stays in the fire tax for future purchases of apparatus and and equipment so yes i absolutely think that has been a uh, a good move i i have a comment along those lines um so I'll make this regarding fire, but it applies equally to police and EMS. Um, also, this comment is what we recognize we need to do during the budget process and what we intend to do during the budget process this year. And it applies equally to the comp plan. Um, we need a five-year plan, uh, a, a tangible, quantified five-year plan uh, for fire, and that would be for equipment and resources like volunteer firefighters. Um, so we need to look five years out and say, what do we need at that point in time? We need to work back, uh, as opposed to just from a budget standpoint, just making the next year's budget and the next year's budget and so on. We need to do the same thing for police vehicles and equipment and, and police officers. Uh, and it would apply to EMS as well. And I know, Herb, you, you've started to work on this, I think. Plan uh, 
We worked on an apparatus plan also. Uh, I met with Dorney today. He's working on his five-year plan, and we're working on trying to get that software in here as early as next week already so we can start plugging these plans in so it will be ready for the first presentation of the budget to the board. Yeah. So the tangible goal is have the five-year plan done by this date. Yes. It's, it's within this budget cycle. Yes. Uh, Chris, I know in the in the past, they some of the fire companies were doing a live-in program. Yes. Is that still ongoing? And is that successful? And is that in all three of our no it, it's it's kind of, it's kind of funny because all three of our fire companies kind of have their own operation uh citroni has the living program they still have it so they have a core of living folks that that are are staffing that that station all the time uh greener walls did go out and they uh, and actually citroni has also just received a grant from the uh, the safer grant to, to help uh on on staffing uh greener walls has gone out and they did get a, a safer grant also uh i believe chief, uh, chief garger is working on doing it again um and that has given them the ability to staff the station pretty much much all day and and they have people that there are at the station on a regular basis so that's more staffed as to where woodlawn is truly the last of the volunteer fire companies as far as like a community-based one where everybody responds in from home so they have like a little different demographics uh, to create that building to follow the same live-in or staffing type thing it would take a lot of work on the, on that structure itself uh so they're more of like the uh the old time fire department community based call goes out everybody responds in and and that works well for them they're doing very well with it and they're still holding so that would look to be like like you said if we're looking to move a station which station do we move um if we would uh move and we'll just say we're going to move woodlawn if we would move woodlawn out to the new facility that we build that would have to change the demographics of how they're going to operate and respond we, they'd have to have some type of of staffing program or or something like that where where they're actually in the in the facility because that response would be from the neighborhood the local neighborhood would be uh, far too long for them to drive all the way out here to let's say let's say the township building to get the apparatus and respond so uh, i hope that answers yeah absolutely yes i appreciate it thank you we have 10 more minutes right give or take yes are there any uh comments from the public we'll move to the next slide and we'll wrap it up Were those two recommendations met? Uh, as, as far as establishing a municipal fire department, um, I don't know where down the line we want to venture into that way, or if somewhere down the line we're talking combination departments or where you're paying some of your staff. As of right now, volunteerism is, for, for whatever reason, is up in our township fire departments. And I'll knock on wood that it stays that way. They're doing a great job recruiting and having personnel. I guess um, I, I should rephrase. Was the first sentence of the first one met in the second? Occurring a lot, a lot to keep vehicles. Oh, the impounded. I don't know about the police. Whether I don't, I'm, I'm not aware of them having a lot for impounding vehicles. That, 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 that's handled that's by the towing towing. Yeah. Be stews and yokum. Yeah. Okay. And then the the EOC for number two, I, that's part of the Citronia Ambulance Building, I believe. Yes. Currently, our EOC is over at the Citronia Ambulance Building. We're all set up over there, um, and we we activate it as needed. And uh, 
it's actually worked very well in some of the uh, flood operations we've we've had. We've we staff it when we need, and um, so far so good. I, I would say. Thank you. Very good. I, I have I have one more comment. It, this kind of uh, combines two two previous. So so the uh, question was asked: Do we need another? You know, a fire company, different location. Uh, we heard Chris's answer. Um, during last year's budget cycle, Barry Search came to me and said, we do. And not, I'm speaking on his behalf. Gave the same location, maybe across the street from this building, to serve uh, points west of here. Um, the other comment is, we need to form a team who will evaluate what we need, you, you, you know, uh, the evaluation will take a long time. Um, it's not going to be a very easy evaluation, right? And it's going to be hard to have all the right data to do it objectively, as opposed to getting a bunch of subjective opinions of, of, of what we should do. So I, if you wanted to state a goal, do it that way, form a team that will evaluate what we're going to do with our fire companies by a specific date. Okay, so it's, so basically having, a, having a, a, a team or a small committee to evaluate the needs and, and where, where we'd like to see it go and what, what the plan would be to get there. Yeah, and come, form, a, form a team with the accountability to come back with a set of recommendations. Okay. On that specific issue, you right. know, not all not the fire on. issues, that specific issue. Do we need a new fire company, different location, so on right. and so forth? For what's yeah. best for the township. Yes. Not just, net, not just individual fire companies. I know yes. they're all. Yes. Well, and and I, and, I must and say they're part they're, of the charm too. They, they are, and they're and they're and they're very <laughs> proud of who they are. And I absolutely uh, don't disagree with that. Like there's that I've been proud of everywhere I've been, and and uh, absolutely it's uh, and it, it's funny because sometimes uh, you know through years of fire service I've been, they said you know uh, 200 years of tradition unimpeded by progress. So, so we always have that hurdle to go over, which, which is, you know, there, there's gotta be tradition, but, uh, we also have a lot of folks that are willing to look outside the box. And they said, uh, it, Barry search had pointed that out and, and he's, he's thinking future also. So, you know, and looking at, you know, what, where, where's our next step. So, yeah, we can, uh, uh, I, I could probably, I'll get with each of the fire departments and see if we can get just a few people onto a committee together with the fire departments for that sole purpose to look at where we're, where we're thinking and what we're thinking of, of doing. Herb has a comment. I was going to get with the township manager first. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, Chris, I know there was a study here done in 2014 of all the apparatuses and the firehouses. I'm wondering if we pull that report out, if any of this information would already be in there that would lead us in the right direction. If I recall looking at that study, it did have a lot to do on the uh, fire apparatus. Uh, I do not off the top of my head recall a lot on on the stations as far as recommendations from stations, but I could absolutely review that report again to see if they did have any recommendations on, on facilities itself. And one last thing, if you could provide, unless it's protected, like your zone map you were talking about for the fire yes. facilities, yes. that will help us in future land use. Like, okay. Like try to site. Try to where, site. Right. wherever growth may or may not occur okay it, it'd be valuable for us to it, see that i i actually have it digitally so it's something that we can email out yep, uh, that'd be great what i could do is i'll get it to greg since he had he knows who to send everything to and we'll we'll get that out to you and the way it's set up basically greener walls is station 11. Mm -hmm. uh the way the stations are broken that 32 is is uh woodlawn 26 is triclover and three three is citronia yep. so on the map you'll see three dash one three dash two or 32 dash one 
So okay. that that just tells you who's first due and which zone it is. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay, I'll get that over to Greg. Because it's it's not only like tri clover. Chances are they're going to be using three on nine. If that's congested, they run into a problem. Yes. So it's not just who's going to show up, how they're going to get there, et cetera. Yeah, yeah and, and travel locations from fire stations too are, are very important because, uh, you know, it's the time of day, as, as, as you well know, uh, depending on where we're responding and time of day can, can be all the difference. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. So along with the new fire station, we also have to think of, it was mentioned, recruitment. we got to staff it. And we got to have the equipment for it, yes. Because we got to be able to serve everything as we're growing, and um, and thinking um, as we do grow, ask developers to uh, to pitch in. What can they do to help? If they're I, growing and adding to the community, what can they do to help support our our fire services? Absolutely, absolutely. And I would I would say, uh, from my statement, it wouldn't be adding a for another fire station to us like the apparatus like and we'll, we'll keep using we'll use woodlawn again if it's going to move woodlawn i'll move woodlawn's equipment to the new station and then that way those and and those two pick pick out because they're so close to each other and then you, you get in a discussion of do you move woodlawn or greener walls well then i think the evaluation has to be on the structure itself on on the building and what's going to cost more money or or what the upgrades are to each facility to get it where where they need to be so i think yeah. that is something that we will have a discussion with also yeah on, on that type of thing i i agree with what you said before get with the chiefs and you know other yes. personnel from the fire companies <clears throat> i think it'll be important to get outsiders who have certain skill sets uh, and add them to that committee. Uh, you know, financial analysis, yes. or, you know, cost estimating financial analysis. And what, what you also have, you'll ha you have people who have the inherent knowledge and experience. Yes. But you also have sort of a, uh, a cold eyes review of the situation okay. with different skill sets. Yes, we could, we could do definitely do that. And I, I could also reach out to uh, Pennsylvania Career Chiefs Association also for some input too. Yeah. Great, great. Very good. Any comments from the public? We're good. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Very informative. Okay, with, uh, oh, it's nine o'clock. Uh, do we want to move forward for how long do you think? I, I can do a very quick overview. I, part of the presentation was for discussion, so maybe that can happen. So it's, I defer to the. Is it time sensitive? Like you need to get started with it, what we would re recommend now or would it be helpful? We want to try to keep the momentum going. No, and I, I, I think that um, we in there's no decision points that you have to make that are too time sensitive but if we go just and you can read over these and i think this was echoed in um in the discussion we had especially when we so we can just go to the next one because the next slide is really where the information um is laid out in terms of the timeline and given um just wanting to meet the goal of adoption by the end of the year so with um over the this month and next month we really want to lay the groundwork for building continuing to build out awareness we are going to be having these types of sessions through august so recognizing that there could be opportunities to promote these a bit more to folks and get them um, up to date and also recognizing that the website's being used to continually solicit public comment as decisions are being made. So creating a communications strategy around that, um, you know, utilizing a variety of mechanisms. I think what we also want to lay the groundwork for, and this is where input is helpful, but not as time sensitive, 
is the current thinking is when we have the draft comp plan, we want to launch the 45 day public comment period around mid September. And we would launch the 45 day public comment period and then begin what we're calling the comp plan community roadshow. <laughs> and this would basically be let's go to our different areas of the community to spaces where we know folks will be, but also invite them to convene. We probably, you know, township building's great, but we want to get out there and meet people somewhat where they are. So we want to identify what those locations will be, um, who are going to be our champions to help us get the word out. We talked, you know, in some previous discussions, thinking homeowner associations, neighborhood groups, um, obviously, you know, folks who are maybe engaged in other aspects across across the community. So where we move on from that point is when we get to November, um, that will be the public comment period. If we are able to launch in mid-September, we'll close and we will review and present back the revised draft based on the public comments in early November and then we do want and these putting these dates out there because we can go ahead and to some extent begin to map out in terms of public notice obviously but also setting the expectation for the timeline so what we have here and there's public engagement associate associated around all of these so with a official public hearing in front of the boc in early december is what we're working towards that's where so when it scales back to where are we now it's laying a groundwork for getting folks thinking about the comp plan um and inviting them to these meetings that are taking place um and then working towards gearing up towards a good amount of outreach and promotion for what we're calling those comp plan community road shows and where we definitely again the ask to this um, group would be help us think of where should we have these who can who are our champions and we'll take and be laying out kind of the uh engagement strategy and getting the communication materials to dave and greg um robert to to make sure we're, we're getting them out there and then obviously working with you on that as well so I don't want to take up more of your time, but th this is really the um, the biggest takeaway from this presentation. Following the, these slides is a series of just how we want to think about it, talk about it, and we can maybe space out some time for that at a future meeting. Is there anything in this schedule that could derail us? Besides a pandemic, but, you know. Well, like, I, let's I, say we get a lot of really good public comment that we totally miss something. How do you incorporate that and revise everything? Well, and, and I think the, well, the first hurdle in a certain extent is when, you know, working up towards that opening of a public comment period and potentially in mid-September is we're going to be bringing you a draft document that we will need agreement that this is what we want to launch into for public comment. So that's that that and why these types of sessions are happening is so this this group and the community is informed about what's actually going to be going into all those sections of the document. So we feel that with this collaborative, these collaborative workshops, what will come in front of you in the terms of the draft document will really reflect what we've been discussing in terms of the goals, recommendations, implementable actions. Now, I'm assuming that during that 45, as we get comments, we will be reviewing yes, them as yes, we go of now course. until the end. So. And that's part of yep. the infrastructure of this outreach and engagement plan as well as the public comment period. It's not like we're going to be waiting to open up the comments until day 45. They'll be incorporated throughout. We'll be able to provide updates and make recommendations. I have a comment along the same lines. So we've been having an ongoing discussion with Randy Cope and Dave Manhart 
now Herb and Dave Manhart. Um, we need uh, some deliverables produced in the near time frame. I, I think Greg's presentation at least alluded to the fact that um, we would get information, at, you know, in the short term here as we go through this process. This is my own language around it, but each one of these areas that you're covering in each one of these meetings is a chapter in the overall comp plan. So um, what, what I've urged and what I hear we're going to do is produce those chapters. And it's, it's this planning commission uh, with, with support from staff, I suppose, and support from uh, additional resources that are being hired to produce those chapters. And, and that would be, I'm thinking that's in the June, July time period, June, July, August time period. We should be starting to see the first chapter like any time now. Yeah, yeah, the draft, the drafts of them. I appreciate the long-term time frame. I appreciate the the uh, community outreach at at the back end of all this. But I and I've been saying we need to see the schedule when we're going to see those chapters. So it's not it's not a comment that goes in a comp plan. This is project managed of this project. We need that schedule when we're going to see those chapters. And. We are actively working with Dave and Greg to build out each of those chapters. And I, I don't want to speak for staff in the exact timeline, but our every intent is to have deliverables throughout the next few months for you. And we, I think we need to understand from the group and from staff um, how best and how most efficiently to conduct that review process. But it's definitely part of our intent to be producing throughout the next few months. That's good. Um, my main point, uh, I for one, and I think others share my viewpoint, I would like to see the schedule with a date that each chapter will be produced. And then let's produce it, and then let let's let the board and the planning commission review it in the short term, not the long term at the end of the year. Got it. Any other comments? Eric, public? No. I have a quick question comment. Um, I know we touched on this, I think, at, at the last meeting. I'll be quick. Um, but I think it's important, as we said before, to document the methods that we used for outreach, how we tried to get people involved, number of people who did participate and respond. So anyone looking back on this within three, six, nine, ten years can see, well, this is the effort they put forth to reach people. This is who responded. I think that's a really important record. How many people do we have attending online? Is there any other comments? Any questions? Yep. Thank you, David Wilson, for stepping up as the chair of this. It's the first time together with all of you. I thought this planning commission uh, members' comments were very uh, astute. Uh, on the money and extremely valuable this evening. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. I oh, move. No. Courtesy of the floor, please. Courtesy of the floor. Uh, today was the deadline for submission for July's Planning Commission meeting. We have one project. Allentown Duncan will return. <laughs> Uh, and we also have Zoning Ordinance Service Pack 2C will be sitting before you. Um, so Allentown Duncan, I, I anticipate, will be a reasonably short review. So we will have plenty of time to chew through some zoning ordinance amendments. So those are the two things we'll be looking forward to in July. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Any opposed? Thank you.